many of us have heard it said that it's 10% of what happens to us in life versus the 90% of what we tell ourselves what happens in life. How many of us have really taken the time to weigh that out? What are we thinking about what just happened to us? Do we take the time to tune in and listen to what our feelings are telling us about what just happened 10 minutes ago in traffic or the exchange we just had with a family member? How are, how are we using the words inside of our heads to give us a commentary? on what's going on. It really does make a difference. It really does impact your life day to day. And it really is what's creating what you are doing in your life. Because it's creating your beliefs. And what you believe you're going to act upon. It's what we call faith. I titled my speech today, How the Clay Keeps Me Humble. And I'll use a few illustrations and some analogy about me as a potter in life and how that has uh, humbled me and uh, kept me and reminding me how to think about my circumstances in life. So to give you a little bit of background, as I was growing up I was almost always a very positive and hopeful individual, or so it seemed. Inside my head I was constantly uh, berating myself, putting myself down, not giving myself enough credit. I didn't have the skills yet to tell myself, I am enough, it's going to be okay, it's alright, you're still learning, those types of things. And the things that came into my life, they felt crushing to me. So years go by and I had not learned the skill yet of how to set and maintain healthy boundaries. So the book that I ended up writing in 2010, Hedged in by God's Grace, started off as a type of curriculum to give people the tools in their life's toolbox so that they could apply that toward healthier boundaries and how to interact with people and what they tell themselves. So before 2010, what instigated me needing to set and maintain healthier boundaries? Well, I'll tell you, it was very simple. In 2006, I experienced a nervous breakdown. This is where the brain chemicals, you know, up here and coursing through my body, pretty much got to the point where I was bumping into walls, couldn't remember how to write my name, and I was having these freeze attacks. It wasn't necessarily an outward looking panic attack, but I would freeze in my environment. Part of that was from years of not setting and maintaining healthy boundaries. So when I was home alone and being treated for that nervous breakdown, it was like a reset in my life. So if you think about it, it's like you go from go, 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 go to slam, life stops. And you have to take the time to heal. So I've come to the point many years later that I'm thankful for that restart in my life. Now I sat there in that quiet winter of 2007 as I was healing and hearing my heart for the first time I had that reset and that's when I heard the title of what would become a curriculum and a book hedged in by God's grace. And from there I started learning to teach myself um, through my heart and through the scriptures that um, it's good and healthy to guard your heart, to set in place boundaries, hedges, gates, so that um, not everything can come and go as it pleases, but that I could take authority over the thoughts and the feelings and basically give myself a healthier foundation in life. So how does that relate to how the clay keeps me healthy, keeps me humble, excuse me? Well, what is the first thing that a potter does when she sits down to the wheel? She takes that lump of clay and wham! 
right onto the wheel. It's a stop. It's a violent pushing of the clay onto the wheel head so that it adheres so that you can do the next step, which is centering. So really and truly for the past it's been over a decade now of my life. I have been learning how to be centered you know, on the wheel of my life. When you center the clay, it allows all the molecules of the clay to cooperate together. Actually, the potter is cooperating with the clay. The clay uh, doesn't is uh, oblivious to the potter, right? But the 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 clay is it's getting in line, it's circling, it's being pushed into the center until it's very, very quiet. Until there's no more shaking. So that the potter can then go forth and make a, a vessel of honor that he or she desires. So really, sometimes in life it takes something like a nervous breakdown to bring you to that sudden stop so that you can then move forward into a centering of your life. So that's one of the ways how the clay keeps me humble. There are many ways and if you ever get to watch one of my videos while I'm throwing you'll get to see sometimes how something gets away from me and that's okay too because the clay keeps me humble, it keeps me centered in life and I can move forward and I can encourage others that way. So thank you for listening.